Hey, what is up? My name is Chris, and welcome to the third and final video in the short series on creating your own custom light dark mode theme with just CSS variables, and today a little bit of JavaScript. Now, in the first video, we kind of set things up, and I intentionally set up the project to where you could take an existing site that used hard-coded uh, like values for colors and things like that, and quickly transition it over to using CSS variables. The second video, we then used those variables to create a light dark mode theme that toggled when a user changed their default settings. So I've just changed mine to dark mode. If I refresh, you now see the dark mode settings. If I change it back to light mode and then refresh, once again, you see the light mode settings. What we want to do today, and this is a live uh, code you can go check out at codinginpublic.dev if you want to play around with a project. It's fully responsive to, so if you come over here, you can see how everything kind of snaps down. Um, and uh, play with this if you want to. Um, but what we want is we want it to where when the user clicks this, it overrides whatever defaults they have and will always choose whatever one they prefer. And then when they come back to your site, we're gonna save it in local storage so that it will look just like it did the last time they were at your site. Okay, so this is what we're working on today, this little button up here. And uh, we're gonna start with this HTML and CSS for this little button. Then we will do a little bit more with CSS to make sure we're ready for the JavaScript and we'll spend most of our time today in the fun stuff in the JavaScript. All right, let's come over here to the GitHub. If you want to get started here, let me expand this here. Just make sure that you've selected lesson three starting point, and then you can download the code this way, or you can clone the entire repo and then navigate to that branch if that's better for you. All right, well, that's uh, set up right now. Let's go ahead and jump over to the index.html page, and we're gonna start by adding a little button here. Here is the server I've sp spun up here with VJS. Again, I showed you how to do that in the first video, so if you have questions, go ahead and head back there and that will show you how to do that. All right, let's come in here and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a button with a class of theme. We're not gonna actually have anything in the button as of yet. We will populate that with JavaScript. Next, we're gonna add both of our audio files and go ahead and have them preload on the page. They're, they're really small and so I'm just gonna do this uh, up front. I'm gonna paste it in here mostly because of this data attribute. I got this from a free website, but they do ask that you uh, show where you got it from and attribute the author properly. So I've done that here. Uh, so this is really the most, the big thing you need to pay attention to. I've got it here from my audio uh, folder over this way. Uh, and then I have added a class that corresponds to the name of the file. So we're gonna copy this down and then we're just gonna change this to off and off. So those should load as soon as the page loads and they'll be ready to play when we need them to. Okay, so that's the HTML. Let's now jump over to the CSS. There are two things we need to do. We do need to go ahead and update the CSS so that we can add an attribute that will mark whether we're in light or dark mode regardless of what the user has as their default setting. And then we also need to add some styling for the button. Since we just did the HTML, let's go ahead and just do the styling for the button and then we'll come back in a second and add the styling for the attribute. All right, so I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna grab that class of theme, which was the button, if you remember correctly. And uh, we're gonna do a few things. First of all, let's go ahead and set a background color here. Uh, we'll set it for our var of text. And that's that dark color uh, that like Canterbury up here is in. Uh, next, we're gonna set a width of 50 pixels and then also a height of 50 pixels. And you'll see it starts to populate over this way. Now, if you remember, uh, we have a few things going on with this. Number one, we do have it as a circle. So I'm gonna say border uh, radius of 50% and typing. All right, here we go. <laughs> and then uh, we're gonna add a border of three pixels solid and we'll use our var of background one. Okay, so I'm gonna save this. You'll see it populate over this way. You can't see the background color here because um, Let's pull it there. Okay, so there you can see the background color show up, um, but when it's down that way, you can't see because it's the same as the background. Okay, next uh, we're going to go ahead and say we want a cursor of pointer. This will indicate to the, the user that they can actually click it and you'll see the pointer, the cursor changes to pointer. Okay, and lastly, uh, let's go ahead and add a display of grid. This will be important once we add that SVG because then we can just say place items center, which will center the SVG exactly in the middle of that button uh, so that it all looks like it belongs. Okay, now the last thing we need to do is create some kind of hover state. So I'm gonna come in here and say theme, and then I'll just use the is selector here, and I'll add both hover uh, and focus. It's the same thing as saying theme hover comma theme focus, um, but just a newer way to do that and a little quicker. 
So we're going to change two things. We're going to change the background color here uh, to our var of accent 1. And then we're also going to change the opacity to 0.8. Okay, so that's all the CSS we need to do for the button. If I come over here, you should see the background change and the opacity does technically change. You can see the difference between this screen and this screen uh, for reference. All right, I think we're good there. Let's jump up to the top here, just below our media queries, because we're going to do uh, just two more things here. I mentioned we are going to have an attribute that we're going to toggle, regardless of whatever the user has as their system default. But it's going to use these exact same things. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And just below here, let's see, let's do the light attribute below here, and we'll do the dark attribute up above. So all we'll do is we're going to have an attribute called color scheme, and we're going to say when that equals light. So when that's the case, we're not going to declare the root again, because uh, this is just a global setting here at the top level. We're going to say whenever this is applied, here's how we want you to update those variables. And then we'll do the same thing up top here. Uh, we will say uh, color scheme is equal to dark. And again, we're going to grab uh, these ones right here. All right, so that's all we need to do for the CSS. Now let's jump over to the JavaScript. Now the way Vite works, it imports this uh, style sheet, and that's how it's getting to this HTML page. And then it's loaded at the bottom of your document as a module. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab uh, the one thing we know we're going to use throughout the document here, throughout the JavaScript, which will be that theme button. So we're going to say theme button is equal to document.querySelector uh, theme. So we're declaring that up top. The next thing we want to do is we want to figure out what the current theme is that the user has. So first of all, we need to know what their default is, because we're going to do the opposite of that whenever they click uh, that button up top. So let's go ahead and have a function that we're going to call get current uh, theme. And it won't take anything in, but we are going to say let theme, and we're going to update this variable in a moment, which is why I'm making it a let variable here. We want it to be window.matchmedia, and then we could either do prefers uh, light or prefers dark, either way. So I'll just say prefers uh, color scheme of dark dot matches. So let's go ahead and console log this just so you can see what we're getting here. And uh, then we'll call it here, get current theme, uh, so that it actually uh, runs on page load. So let's come down here and it says false. So get, it does not prefer dark. All right, then let's switch it and see what happens now. If I reload, it now says true. So it's basically figuring out what their system default is. So we're going to use this and write a little ternary here, which is just like a short if statement. And we know that we're, this is truthy or falsy. We're going to get either true or false. So what we're going to do is say, if it is true, then we want theme to be equal to dark. And if it's not true, we want it to be equal to light. That's just how you write a ternary. If you want to make this easier to read, you might jump these down this way. It's the same thing. As long as you don't put a semicolon, uh, you're, you're asking a question. And then if it's true, you're saying something. And if it's false, you're saying something else. So theme will be either dark or light, depending on what their default is on their machine. Now, just to make sure that's working, let's go ahead and save it. And we'll come over here, and you see it is dark. If I change my system again here and reload, it now says light. So that's working properly. Now what we're going to do is just return uh, that theme. Okay, so I've got the current theme. Now what I need to do is create a, an event listener on the window. So we'll see add event listener. What we want to wait for is the DOM content loaded. And once that is loaded, we're going to write an arrow function here. And this arrow function will call another function we're going to write called load theme. We're going to pass it here, get current theme. So in other words, we're going to re get return from here either dark or light, and that's what we're going to use to load the theme itself. So let's write that function called load theme. So load uh, theme. And in here, we're going to take in a theme, because that's what we're going to get back from current theme here, get current theme. We're going to come in here, and the first thing we need to do is grab the root of the document because we need to update the variable at the root level. So we'll come in here and say document.querySelector, and we're just going to grab the root. Next, we're going to write an if statement that asks the question whether that thing passed in was light or dark. We could say either light or dark. We did dark above. Let's do light here. Spread out the light and the darkness. You know, keep them in tension. Okay, anyhow. All right, well, let's grab the theme button. We're going to update the inner HTML to an SVG. Now, I'm going to grab this SVG from Feather Icons, and we're going to need both 
a moon one, and we're going to need a sun one. Both of these are free. It's all open source icons, and they, they are awesome. You can adjust the size, the stroke width, uh, the current colors, what they're set to by default, which if you add them inline, these SVGs, again, you can update that current color with the color of the parent that the SVG is in. I've gone ahead and grabbed those and updated one thing. So for sake of time, I'm actually just going to paste in what I've got here. So I'll paste in the first one here, with, which is an SVG. The only thing I've changed on it is I've removed that current color on the stroke, and I've replaced it with class equals background to dash dash stroke, which is a CSS variable that basically says the stroke should be the color background to. All right, so rather than you watching me do that slowly, I figured I would just do that uh, briefly and paste it in. Also, you'd come over here and say, if that's not the case, if it isn't light, then we want theme button uh, dot, dot enter HTML to be equal to, and I'll paste in the other one here. And again, it's the same thing. I just switched out the stroke equals current color to, for class equals background to dash dash stroke. And if I go ahead and save this, and then I come over here, you'll notice already, you may have noticed that icon is already set up. And if I switch my default here, you'll see, and if I refresh, it actually switches out the icon. So it is working properly, and that's good to know. Now what we want to do is update one more thing in the root. So we're going to say root.setAttribute. And remember, we had that attribute called color scheme. And that's just at the, the kind of the top level. We're going to set it to whatever the theme is. So the theme is the thing that was passed in, and I actually need to add this in back ticks here. This is just an E6 template string, and it's going to update that color scheme to reflect whatever the actual theme is. So if I come over here and I refresh, it's dark. If I switch here and I refresh, it's light and it's not working. Let's see, what is going on here? Well, the trouble is we actually haven't hooked up the event listener on the button. But if we were to come over to the elements, you could see it here. If I refresh here, you see it's dark because uh, that is our default system. If I change mine to light and refresh it, it now says light. So it is actually updating it properly. We just now need to hook up the button itself. So let's write one more function and we're gonna adjust the get current theme here in a moment too. So this last one actually will be another event listener. So we're gonna say theme button. That's what we declared up top and add event listener here. And then we're gonna say click and on click, we're gonna go ahead and we could write this as a callback. Uh, let's just write it as an arrow function since we're already here. And that's what we did on this event listener on the window as well. So we're going to say we want the theme. So let theme equal to get current theme. We'll come back to that in a moment. But for now, let's just also declare audio up top here. And then we're going to change which audio we're going to play depending on basically if the theme is light or dark. So that's where we'll start down here. We'll say let theme. If it equals to... Let's see, let's go back to dark. Let's mix it up again. Uh, we're going to say if it's equal to dark, then we want audio to equal document.query selector. We want it to be that class that was connected to the light button, actually, because we're going to be switching it to on. So we want the on one, and then we want to say that the theme now is going to equal to light. So you see what we've done here is we've used these let variables and grab these things, and then we're going to update them depending if it's light or dark. So if it's not dark, then it could be light. That's the other option. And so we'll just copy these things down right here. And we'll grab this light on and change this to light off. And then we'll change this to dark. Now down below here, we're going to say audio.play. And then we're going to load the theme. And this theme has been updated. And because we declared it out top here, even though it's scoped to this if statement, because we declared it ahead of time and we updated both of these within the if statement, now the updated theme will be loaded properly. So if I save this, let's get rid of this little thing here. And if I come over this way, you'll see it says light here. If I click, it now says dark, and it should refresh and change. Now it's still not refreshing and changing, but you hear it playing the audio. So what is going on here? Well, first of all, what we haven't done is actually adjusted what sets this current theme. Because when the window loads, it's still going to reload and it's just going to grab the current theme, which again is just the default. So we're actually going to save everything in local storage here to make sure that we can override the system default. Now, if you don't know about system storage here or local storage, it's an application in Chrome. And under here, under local storage, whatever yours is, there's also session storage, which is as long as a user has a tab open. And then there's cookies and things like that. 
The advantage of local storage and session storage is number one, uh, for the user, it's more secure because none of that ever goes to the websites that they're on. It's always stored locally in their browser. Now, how do you interact with local storage? Well, let's go back up to our Git current theme. And we've gone ahead and just figured out what their default is on their machine. Next, we're actually going to say local storage. And this is how you access it, dot git item. We can call this whatever we want. Let's go ahead and just call it uh, Canabre, which is the name of the site, dot theme. And then we're going to say, figure out if there's anything there. So we're either going to get true or false if we were to console log this. Is there anything there with the key of Canabre theme? Now, in this case, there's not. But let's go ahead and say, if that is true, we want to update theme, which is this variable right here. We want to update it to local storage dot get item and the exact same thing. So if there is something there, we want to actually update it with that update theme. If there's not something there, then null. Just don't do anything. Don't change that theme variable. So what we've done here then is we have said, hey, we're going to take whatever their default is on their system and override it if there's something in their local storage. Now what we need to do is after we've grabbed the icons properly, we're going to now update that local storage based off of whatever theme is now equal to. So we'll do that down below here. I was looking at the wrong section here. So theme has been updated to light or dark, depending on what it used to be. So we're going to come in here and we're going to say local storage dot set item this time. We're going to set canabre uh, dot theme to in backticks here theme. So that that variable of theme. So now if I save this, you'll see when I click this application key value pair should update. If I click here, now it says Canterbury theme is equal to dark. Now let me jump back over here to the console. We've got no errors there. But you'll see we're still not actually getting it to switch. Well, now we need to do some debugging because I'm not sure what is going on here. I don't see anything wrong in the JavaScript. I think I may know the problem though. If you run back over to this S, uh, the CSS, what I wasn't thinking about when I put these darks next to each other is that this light is always going to override the dark. So we actually need to move both of these down below. Maybe you already spotted that. We'll move it down this way like this, and that way it should actually load first. Yeah, and when I reload it, it does that automatically. So now this should switch uh, right away as soon as we load the page. Now there's just one more thing we need to pay attention to when it comes to JavaScript, and that is when I click here, if I click really fast, you'll notice that it like kind of gets behind the audio does. Those are the kinds of things it's easy to forget about. But what we're going to do is just do one other thing here to this audio. Before we play it each time, we're going to say that the current time will now be equal to zero. What we're doing here is just ensuring that as soon as they click, it basically restarts the audio and then plays it. So now if we come in here and do that annoying thing, it should just go right back and forth uh, very quickly. So that's one thing we can do for the JavaScript to make it a little bit better. There's one thing we could also do to the HTML. And if I jump over this way here, and uh, let's find that button here, we could make this button a lot more accessible. Right now we've just got a class on it, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that this should be a role of switch, because it's basically switching from light mode to dark mode. And then we're gonna add an aria label equals, let's call it light dark mode. So when people are using screen readers or things like this, it will actually say switch for light mode, dark mode. That's especially important here because there's nothing visually telling them, hey, what is this switch for? There's nothing inside that button itself. What other changes might you make to make this a little bit more responsive or more accessible? Uh, let me know in the comments below. If you do have questions about anything we've done today, uh, feel free to leave a comment. I'll try to keep my eye on it. I hope this was a big help especially taking a project the way we set it up here from kind of using standard, just baked in CSS colors to then using CSS properties, and then eventually switching it over to where the user's default preferences change the color, and then finally where they can change it manually if they want to. A big thanks to Sean one more time for having me on his channel. I've really enjoyed this and I hope you have too. All right, well, thanks so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.